true God, the God who is risen. Shout, my God is alive. My God is alive. Yes, he is alive. Now open your mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Father, we love you because you first love us. We give you all the praise, Jesus. We extol your name. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hello be your name. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for paying the price for my sins. Lord, I am grateful. You are the champion. You are the champion. You reign supreme. You have won the victory. Hallelujah to the Lord Most High. I come before my Lord and King. The one who gave his love to me. Raise your voices higher as you sing it. I raise the banner, the banner of his name. Until the nations, until the nations know. Say I come.
I declare over you in the name of Jesus that this morning the resurrection power will be manifested in your life in the name of Jesus. Your coming this morning, your encounters will not be denied. Your coming will not be wasted. As he rose, whatever your life has not risen yet is rising this morning in the name of Jesus. You are returning with your testimony. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Give the Lord a clap of hand as you have your seat. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Peniel is the gateway homecoming. This is our holy convocation. This is the pilgrimage that every member and offspring of members must look forward to attending. This is the place of the blessing from our spiritual father. This is the meeting that gives, you, gives us our identity as I am gateway people. We expect that those from every city and station are here. And now that you are here, welcome home. It is my privilege on behalf of our lead and co-pastor, George and Manuela Izuma, to welcome you to the Easter service. Christ is risen, hallelujah. May the miracle of Easter bring you renewed hope, faith, love, and joy in Jesus Christ's name. Turn to your neighbor with a smile on your face and wish them happy Easter. I want to remind you that Gateway exists to help you genuinely encounter God. In the kingdom of God, everyone rises to the level of their faith and obedience. Please engage God without reservation in this service today, and you will have a destiny shift. 2024 is our covenant year of the shepherd. Remember to pray Psalms 23 every day. Connect with our man of God on the altar of mercy prayers every night, 11 p.m. to 12.15 a.m. on radio, TV, and social media. Also, download the Gateway Connect app for daily updates and follow all our social media platforms. This year, goodness and mercy shall follow you at all times in the name of Jesus. Friends, nothing commands the blessing of God like kingdom service. Please go to the Welcome Center Information Hub at the entrance of the church, if you love to volunteer for training to serve in a department, yet to attend our membership orientation class, MT1, or to be connected to our G12 cell groups. Also remember that every message, book, or tokens of Gateway are available at the Altar of Mercy bookshop near the Welcome Center. I am sure you know that when we say, I am gateway, we are invoking our covenant identity as a unique community of believers. So let's remind ourselves of what makes a true disciple. We call it the four L's, learn, live, love, and lead. Please repeat this with me. A true disciple learns from God's word. A true disciple lives in obedience to God. A true disciple loves and serves in the church. A true disciple leads others to Christ. Finally, we are a praying church and miracles happen when we pray. If God has done a miracle for you, please go to the testimony department at the back of the hall and record your testimonies. Any testimony you withhold delays the manifestation of the next one. When we say thank you, God says take more. Once again, welcome to the Gateway Experience. My name is Matthew Edwe Agare. 
I am the executive pastor of Gateway International Church. Enjoy a God encounter in this service today. Jesus exceeds expectations. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor once more time. Smile at them and say, good to see you this Easter morning. You're looking so good and elegant. Good morning. And it's my pleasure. My name is Pastor Kyle Day Abobani from GIC Abuja. And it's my pleasure one more time to welcome you to this Easter Sunday celebration service. Celebrate Jesus with a clap of hand. Amen. So I bring you greetings from Abuja people. <laughs> Praise God. This morning, today is Sunday, 31st March, and we'll be taking seed 31. It's titled, E Arose. A key text to be taken from Luke chapter 24, verse 5 to 6. I'll read. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has reason. Remember how he told you why he was still with you in Galilee. Now let's read the text for today. Today's text narrates the experience of the women who had gone into the tomb where Jesus was laid to rest to use some spices on his body, most probably for preservative purposes. To their amazement, they didn't find his body, but instead they met two men who scared them out of their wits. The men, angels, had to remind them that Jesus had openly declared that he was going to be betrayed, crucified, and he would rise again. The Bible says afterwards that they remembered his words. Isn't it amazing how we sometimes lose focus and forget the purpose of his death and resurrection. Sometimes we get carried away by the ceremonies and lose sight of the significance of the season. He arose many centuries ago and today is a reminder that he is reason. Don't forget this. He is reason. As you celebrate his resurrection, don't forget that by his rising, you have also risen from death. Somebody say amen. amen. To life, from darkness to light, from sickness to health, from poverty to wealth, and from bondage to freedom. Can I hear a resounding amen? amen? So see yourself today as one who has been created, crafted, and commissioned to carry God's glory. So what do you do? Reflect on the purpose of Easter. All through today, you do that. As chicken is going into your mouth, remind yourself that the reason why I can eat this chicken is because he died. And then celebrate. Remind someone of the purpose of Easter. Let someone else know the power of Jesus' death and resurrection. And then celebrate Jesus like you have never done before. Will you pray with me together as you lift your right hand? Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for paying the ultimate price for me, thereby giving me a future in Jesus' mighty name. What we'll expect you to do as action point for this morning is to use social media as a tool to remind people of the purpose of Jesus' death and resurrection. Put something on your status. Take a picture in church and write something about what you learned about the resurrection and the death of Jesus. And then you can read further in First Samuel, as your Bible reading for today, from chapter 28 to 31. And we will straight away take our Roy Covenant Confession together. Will you lift your right hand up with me as we take the Covenant Confession with boldness of faith, at the top of your voice, with confidence and assurance, declare together. I confess that God is a good God. 
He is my source. He is taking good care of me. My life is sustained by his covenant. Today, standing on Romans 10 verse 9 to 10, I affirm that Jesus Christ is my Lord. He died and rose from the dead. His sacrifice paid the price for all my sins. He is in heaven now, but his Holy Spirit lives in me. Jesus is my life. I live by his word. I am led by his spirit. I believe that in him and through him, I am a member of the family of God. And very soon, he will come back to take me home. Because of Jesus Christ, I am blessed of God. My DNA is supernatural. I walk in prosperity. I create my dreams. I find favor everywhere. Kings come to the brightness of my rising. Nation open their gates. And I cannot fail. Nothing dies in my hands. No power can hurt my destiny. Goodness and mercy follow me at all times. On my path, there is no sickness nor death. This year, 2024, I received the covenant of Rohi. The Lord is my shepherd. Gateway International Church is my spiritual family. I put God first. I pay my tithes. I am a soul winner. I serve in God's kingdom. My life works. My faith works. My relationships work. My business works. Everything works. My covenant place is at the topmost top. Every promise and prophecy of 2024 will be fulfilled in my life. There shall be no, no evil reports in my life. Only good things are permitted in my life. Can you look at your neighbor and affirm to them again? Only good things are permitted in my life. Celebrate Jesus one more time. As Hello dear, happy Easter and welcome home. It is wonderful to bring to you another episode of the Month in Review, a program that reflects the impact and beauty of our church, of which you, yes you, are an integral part of. The Month in Review is not just a story of the church, it is our collective story as a family under God. And what a joyful thing to know that you are one of us. Celebrate yourself, my dear brother and sister. It's March, a month of monification. The Lord is our shepherd, so we lack nothing. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. The customary three-day prophetic impartation opened our month from the first to the third of the month, themed Make It Happen, activating the power to get wealth. We experienced the mind-transforming word, showers of blessing, and the communion of preservation. As you know, in Gateway International Church, every Wednesday in the month of March is dedicated to bring you to the knowledge needed for a successful life. So that's why this month we focused on business and personal education. On the 6th, we learned how to grow a young business in Nigeria. On the 13th, we rediscovered technology and the online economy. On the 20th, we are taught networking, financing, and maximizing international opportunities. Now, for this information, I'll have to switch from English to Pigeon. I thank God beg you. If you miss any class, have mess on yourself and get the teachings so you can take your life to the next level. I want you to know.
you will succeed. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. On the 15th, we held the 50th birthday concert of our mother, Dr. Manuela George Zungwa, themed Golden Echoes. We had the ministry of Noble G, Dara Speaks, Priye Odede, and Shego Aniye and the Sib Fellows. It was an amazing evening to thank God and celebrate our mother in the Lord. On the 16th, our mother in the Lord turned 50 years old. Can you celebrate our mother? Thank you, Mama, for your love, patience, and service. We love you and we appreciate you for all you've been doing for us. Honor him for the journey that made her the woman she is. Thank the Lord for her life. Thank him for health. Thank him for strength. We celebrate you, pastors, and we celebrate you, every GIC member. Thank you. I've also heard that if you were born in March, it means you are most likely to become a pastor. So please register for GBI. Can somebody praise the Lord? On the 27th, our Father in the Lord set out for the Elabuchi Market Outreach. Hundreds of people gathered and God marked the event with signs and wonders. <laughs> Peniel, the homecoming, kicked off from the 27th and is ending today, the 31st of March, being Easter Sunday. Hallelujah, Christ the rules. If you're happy to be back home, can you shout glory? This year, the theme is the blessed life, and I'm glad to know that you are blessed. This month, our focus for every Sunday has been the shepherd is my source. On the third, we learned the principle of the beehive. On the 10th, we learned the power of connections. And we also celebrated our mothers. Women, oh yeah! Yes, women have been shouting your name too much this year. In fact, men, oh yeah! Uh -huh, so that you can be balanced. On the 17th, we were taught the blessing of opportunity. And we had the ministry of Pastor Chuzi Udenwa. And also our mother had her 50th birthday Thanksgiving. Jesus I don't know what words I could use to express my gratitude. I don't know how to tell him I am grateful. But anyhow you can say it, please let your voices be added to my own voice. So that the heavens will hear that this girl is grateful. Father, I... On the 24th, we learned of the test of the 10%. I know we are fighters. And today, the 31st and Easter Sunday, will be open to the covenant of abundance. Every Friday, the deliverance arm of our church called the Faith Clinic holds, and this month, God blessed them with many miracles, signs, and wonders. And also, I would like you to take a look as you see God move in the program. <laughs> Also remember, the Boaz and Samuel Project, which is a prayer fellowship for singles looking to wed and for married couples looking for the fruit of the womb, holds every Monday. Don't miss out on God's blessing. And remember, every Monday to Friday, by 11 to 12 p.m., the altar of mercy holds. Remember that with everything you've been taught this month, one of you equals three Eromos. So put God's word into action and enjoy the blessing now i would like you to remember that in everything the answer is jesus and to this i would like to tell you a story when i was 11 years old in the minor seminary school stella Maris college which i attended for six years i can remember being taught by brother peter mary during one of his lectures and he said that there is a question that Pilate asked jesus that even after Pilate died in his grave, he was still pondering and wondering what the answer was. And that question is, what is truth? 
Many years passed and that question never left my heart. A few years ago, about two or three years, I can remember having a conversation with my friend and he spoke to me and he said, people think truth is a thing or truth is a fact. But the actual meaning of truth is a person and that person is Jesus Christ. Isn't it comforting that with the troubles and challenges and how dynamic and changing life is, that there is something and someone who doesn't change. And that person is Jesus. So no matter what the challenge is, remember that he is your answer. He is your hope. He is your solution. So keep your heart on him. Love him. Serve him. He will help you. Remember that you are the best. And with Gateway International Church, you are empowered to handle whatever life brings. You are the best. You have what it takes. And I am, honestly, a huge of you. And this is the Monty Review. Welcome home again, and God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands and say this with me? The king is risen. I'm not hearing you. The king is risen. His name is Jesus. And he lives in me. Can you say that again? The king is risen. His name is Jesus. And he lives in me. Come on, John, this thing. You're the head. 
Praise the Lord, church. This thing works. Hallelujah. Happy Easter, everyone. Praise the Lord, church. My name is Akata Uche. On Wednesday, we went out with Papa for market evangelism in Timba. So when we were ministering, Papa started ministering, and he gave a word of knowledge. He said, there's someone here that has a growth in your left-hand side of the abdomen. I've had this growth for like a year that is melting, that we should touch it because that, that thing is already melted. But what I was wearing, I couldn't touch it well. I said, okay, let me get to the house. When I go home that same day, I touched it. It has gone. The growth is gone. I've been checking it up to this minute. I can't find it. I Can you give the Lord a better clap offering? Inside the market. And God visited her. You are in church. If God doesn't visit you, something is wrong. Can you lift your hand and say, he will visit me? Praise the Lord, church. My name is Chido Zee Chupai. Uh, I came to thank God for giving me admission. Last year, I wrote jam because I wanted to do, I couldn't get the cutoff mark, so they gave me another course, and I didn't like that course. But <laughs> I was in class one day, they called me from admission office, they said, dossier, dossier, who changed your portal password? Who rejected your admission? I said, what, what kind of thing is this one now? Who rejected my admission? Because nobody has my account details, my portal. So, like, this is something that I've been praying for since I saw my jam score. And it was not up to my standard. So it really hurt me mentally, emotionally. I've been praying, believing God. Then during one of the services in March, Papa did, told us to come with two stones. I think it was in March, uh, prophetic impartation. That Ebenezer stones. I brought two stones. Normally, I only bring one all the years in Gateway. But I don't know why. That day, I brought two stones. I poured the blood on it. Papa made it the stone of Ebenezer, my helper. Uh, <laughs> quiet time is good though. One morning, I was just, I was doing my quiet time. The Holy Spirit told me, carry those two stones, put one at the Faculty of Medical Science and one at the ICTC of UST. I did it. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I was coming back from school. I checked my jam. I've gotten the admission. I just want to give God the glory because it's not easy. It's not easy. Can you give the Lord a better shout in the house? Hallelujah. Stand up, everyone. Lift your hand to the Lord and just honor him. Adore him. Praise his name. Wave your hands to the God who loves you. Wave your hand like you are crazy. Everywhere you are, wave your hand with a shout in the house. Jesus arose. That's the sound we carry. Can you wave your hand and scream? I told you we sing the old song. Out of the grave he arose. He arose. Yeah. 
for death could not hold him. Even in the grave, Jesus is worshiping with everything in your life. for you. Thank you for dying for you. Thank you for breaking the power of Satan hell and the grave. Thank you for cutting off the work of wickedness.
First Corinthians 15, where you are standing, we won't take too long on them. First Corinthians 15, 14 to 20. Hear me now, people of God. The most important day in the Christian calendar is not Christmas. Is Easter. Somebody say Easter. You see. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. Who is the person in charge? And your faith is also vain. If he didn't rise, being here is a waste. There are all kinds of men that claimed they were God or that they met God. Those who claim that prophets have decayed long ago. People go to their tomb to celebrate the bones that are decayed. But we are here today. The tomb is empty. He is not in the grave. He is risen. Somebody shout it, he is risen. 
He's not a grandmaster. He's not an ancient prophet. He is Lord. Look at verse 15. Yeah. If he didn't rise, we have found false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ. Whom he raised up, not up. If so be that the dead rise not. Next verse. For if the dead rise not, then is Christ not risen. He's not raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. The reason you can stand here now without any trace of sin is not because you didn't sin. It's because somebody committed it. <laughs> Are you hearing me here today? Verse 18. Then, if he didn't rise, they which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Anyone that died in Christ died like other people of other religion. Verse 19. If in this life only we have hope, we are of all men. But, sir, if he didn't walk well here, there is still eternity. But if he walk here well here and walk well there, can I hear amen like thunder? Verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit. Can you lift your two hands? Let me hear you scream like thunder, I believe. Jesus died. Jesus rose again. He is the Son of God. Can you say like a Christian? I believe. Jesus died. He rose again. He is my Savior. Second Corinthians 5 13 to 15. For whether we be beside ourselves, if you think we the colo, it is to God. If you think we are doing this fanatism too much, it is to God. And when we are sober, we are sober just for people not to misunderstand. If not, we'll be colo for life. No, you are not hearing. He said our misbehavior is toward God. That's why we dance the way we dance. That's why we shout the way. Come on, shout in the house, somebody. Hear me. He said the only reason we behave like we get bread is so that people don't misunderstand us. Look at. He said it's for your cause. Next verse, verse fourteen. Wait. For the love of Christ. Do you love Jesus? He said, for the love of Christ is what constrains us. Because we judge, we assume, we believe that if one died for all, then we are all dead. If he died for you, then you died with him. Did you die with him? Now verse 15. He said, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him who died for them. Rose again. Lift your two and say, Father. Father. Can you lift your hand with a loud voice? Say, Father. Father. I live for you. And I will live for you the rest of my life. Jesus, you died for me. May my life be your life. Can I hear your amen? A young 15 year old boy had an accident in the US and he signed a letter donating his organs his kidney his liver if he dies he didn't know he was going to die in fact funny enough it was a week he did that, that he died 15 year old an athlete a rugby player a footballer healthy but they were driving and had an accident and he died when the crash happened and they found out that they can't recover him, they, activate, they saw that he had a card in him that said, in case of anything, donate my organs. They removed the heart for a man. Removed the kidney for another person. Removed the liver for somebody else. After 
the transplant. Burial is done. Everything. The mother, what I'm telling you, you can check it online. The mother called the three persons that received the son's organs, the heart, this and that. I said, now, I want you to live as if my son lived in you. He said, that's all I want. And the mother is born again. And she told them, he said, listen, I don't know who you are, but from today, let my son live through you. As you live here from today, may the Jesus who died for you, may his life come through you. May your life touch your generation. May your life be in purity. May your life be in power. If I hear your amen, you take your portion. Colossians 2.15 And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made the show of them openly. Can you grab somebody on your right and your left? And say, what Jesus conquered must not conquer you. What is spoiled will not work in your life. Lift up that person's hand and say, every devil that Jesus defeated will never defeat you. Pray that for that person for one minute. Everything Jesus defeated cannot defeat you. Amen. Every hand lifted. I declare over you. Sin will not defeat you. Sickness will not defeat you. Poverty will not defeat you. Witchcraft will not defeat you. Causes will not defeat you. Bondages will not defeat you. Everything fighting your destiny. Die in the name of Jesus. Hebrews 9.16 For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. If a man wrote a will, before the will can work, the man must die. Is that true? But in the case of Jesus, you know why they call this New Testament? There was an Old Testament. Lawyers, when a man writes a will, what do they say? The last will and testament of Mr. So and so. Will and testament are the same. Come on, are you hearing me? So Old Testament means the old will of God. New Testament means the new will of God. The Old Testament was in Moses. The New Testament is in Jesus. Moses all was celebrated with the blood of bulls and goats. But the one of Jesus, God made the will. Jesus was the one that made the will. And then he died so the will can begin. And then he entered the grave and came out again to be the one enforcing the will. So no lawyer can cheat you. No judge can hold a yammer to pull at her. I lift my hand over you. Everything written about you will happen this year. If it is in the Bible, it will work for you. It will work for your business. It will work for your marriage. It will work for your career. Lift your hand and shout, it will work for me. It will work for me. And then finally, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power in heaven. Huh? I want you to know, he didn't say all powers. All power. There are no ten. All power. In heaven and on earth. How great is it to know the one who holds him? The one who holds him now, your brother, now, your friend, now, your pally. Oh boy, life no go suffer you. Uh, no, no, no. I say, I say, life no go suffer you. You see, you see, you see, you see, many times we sing a song, it doesn't make sense. Me, I know go suffer. I know God begged for bread. God of miracle. Now my papa. 
please look up here. Look up here. You know what that song means? If there is no food anywhere, the God that is up can create one. I can suffer. I can beg. If you have my voice, say yes. It's a all power. I, I know the one who holds power. Go to Abuja and tell them they know all power. I know. No, I'm talking to. Is anybody hearing me? Go to White House or Blue House. They know all power. The man in your compound, you are calling a strong man. No whole power. I know who whole power. But you see, who whole power? And that is why. That is why you are where you are. Jesus no whole power. Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth has been given to him. And then he turns to you and says, behold. <laughs> so, now who hold power? Now who hold power? Now me hold power. Lift your hand above your head. From today, your word will walk. Your prayer will walk. Your confession will walk. Your sacrifice will work. Your service will work. All power is in your hand now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Next verse, verse 19. Verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach on it. So our assignment is to go and tell everybody we, now we hope our now. Now we in charge. Now we day in charge. You know, when you are on the side of the one where they in charge, you, there's the way you they talk. Oh. Eh? He said, teaching them, baptizing them, grab your neighbor, sir. All through the Saturdays of this month, in every location, we'll be going out on evangelism, publicity. Why? Because we need to tell the world he holds the power. And he gave it to us. Lift up your neighbor, sir, and say, Father. Father. No, 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 no. No. Don't behave like that. Lift up your neighbor's hand and say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Put upon every member. Put upon every member. Of a gateway church. Gateway. In every location. In every location. The, grace the grace for evangelism. For evangelism. Father, Father. Let Jesus, let Jesus be, manifest be manifest in our city. In our, city, in our, nation, in our nation. In our generation. Our generation through, us, through us. Let millions let me come me. to Jesus. Via gateway. Open your mouth and pray. Amen. Amen. Can you just wave your hand? Father, let everyone here be immersed in a new glory. We have stayed with you through this weekend, and we know we are walking in the blessing. Receive the glory. And everyone shout amen. amen. Lift your right hand and scream like thunder. I am gateway. I am My covenant place. It's at the topmost top. top. Only good things are permitted in my life. With a louder voice today, I open my heart to the word of God. I believe that the power of God will touch my life. The word of God will work for me. And I know that my life will never, never ever remain the same. In Jesus Christ's name. And if there's a human being here who believes in the Lord, shout amen. amen. Shake about seven persons around you. Honor them. Welcome them. And then let's get seated. Let's get seated. You can bring out your Bible and your iPad, pen, whatever. Let's go. Those moving up and down, can you sit down now?
When your father in the Lord is on the pulpit, you don't move up and down. If you hear my voice, say yes. yes. Well, we want to wrap up our money match today. Are you about to match into money? Yes. Shout it loud that my, the shepherd is my source. I've been talking to you all this while about the shepherd being your source. Amen. 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 Please, those of you under the sun, if the canopy is not enough, remove the canopy of those selling food and put it for members of church. Go there, carry the canopy and bring it here. If you don't like me, you go tired. I love Jesus and I love my people. Are you hearing me? Nonsense. I see it cannot be by the road there where they're selling food. And people are there under the sun. Sitting outside there with our canopy. I bet go collect it from them. Let some beat them. Praise. Praise the name of Jesus. You know your pastor is a good man. Give the Lord a good clap offering here. Okay, let's move. So the first week we talked to you on the principles of the BHAG. Second week on the power of connections. Now calm down, now I want to take you into something deep. Third week on the blessing of opportunities. Last week we did with, dealt with the test of the 10%. And today I'm talking to you on the covenant of abundance. Amen. I said today in the first service, the way you see God is the way you experience him. You experience the blessing of God relative to your revelation of God. And when we're talking about the revelation of God, it depends on how great you see God as, your revelation of his majesty. Anybody that sees a small God will have a small expectation. If you see a big God, you have a big expectation. You also need to have a revelation of the goodness of God. You know that God loves me and God cannot withhold any good thing from me. Will he withhold from you? The Bible said the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk what? Uprightly. And that's you. Amen. Uh, amen. And the third one is integrity of God. That God will rather tear down the whole heaven and earth than to allow his prophecy over you come fail. Somebody lift up your hand. The word of God over you will not fail. Amen. So believe in the greatness of your God. Believe in a God that can do anything. I told you of a young man that came for impact. Before he came, two Sundays before that, their landlord has locked up their church. They begged and begged and begged, and they did service in front of the church because they have not paid. The next Sunday again, they came to church. The man came and disturbed them and drove them away. He came for impact that week. We finished praying. He went back home. As he was arriving, he saw the landlord running to him, and the man said, ah, the, whatever hit the man, I don't know. The man said, listen. He said, Pastor, I am sorry. He said, no human being has a right to stop church from having service. He said, for what I did, I am giving you this place for the next two years free. The Holy Ghost flogged him well. You see, the young man came to pray. Thinking that God will give him money. He didn't know that God has arranged it. As you are living here now, may God arrange something for you. Amen. I will never forget Pastor Z of Assemblies of God. They posted him from Port Harcourt here to Iba or one of those villages. And he came to me, he was very angry. He said, Pastor, every time I labor, I put in my best. The moment is like the church has grown and I want to reap, they throw me off. He said, I don't know what's going on. He was angry with his system. And I said, calm down. He was still talking. So I shouted at him. I said, are you the most cursed man on earth? Come, calm down. 
God didn't curse you. God can't mismanage your destiny. He's mentioning the one that happened the other day. What? So I said, no. I said, where you are going, God goes there. I said, what matters is not your location, it's your allocation. Are they still hearing me? He got to Eba. He is there. A few weeks later, a man bought a, a, a Lexus four-wheel drive here in Port Harcourt. Was taking his bath on Saturday morning. I had a voice in the bathroom. Take this car. Go to Eba. And mention the assemblies of God. Mention the name of the pastor. And say, give it to him. This man got angry. He didn't want to obey. That voice kept harassing him. He called a friend. That one drove his own jeep. Both of them drove from here. And they went all the way to Iba. They got there. They asked, is there an assembly of God church here? They said there is. Pointed them to the place. He got there. Asked the man, is there a pastor here? He said yes. He didn't, he's not an assembly of God member. He doesn't know the pastor. He has never been to Iba since he was born. That was a day. He, the pastor told me, he said, the way he dropped the car with him, you know he was angry. <laughs> and came back. What he couldn't get in Portaco, God gave him a neighbor. <laughs> the one you are serving is a mighty God. <laughs> Lift your two hands. I command right now that what you need this year be donated to you. If your amen sounds like thunder, your answer will sound like thunder. He's a big God. He's a good God that he cannot lie. Have a revelation of God. And secondly, I say to them that the people that draw life from the cross, they encounter blessing with ease. Please, everyone, look up here. Look up, look up. There are some of you that draw life from pastor. All you do in church is come to church and wait that the man of God is anointed can minister to you. But can you look beyond the man of God and look at the cross? And look at Jesus who died. And look at the real savior you came to worship. If you hear my voice, say yes. Did you hear me? Look at him. Look beyond the man. Even if I stood here unanointed, Jesus is still anointed. Look up here. You know, there are some foolish people. They say, I went to that church. There's no anointing there. Listen. We are two or three are gathered together in my name. I am there in their midst. Are we gathered in his name? Yes. That means he is here. And you have access to him. So if your pastor of your church does not have anointing, you, you can reach Jesus. No, you are not hearing me. So what's your problem? Go to the cross. Tell your neighbor, go to the cross. Tell a better name. Not that one you are sitting beside. Turn to a better name and say, go to the cross. When you look at the cross, you see so many things. The first thing you see at the cross is that the love of God is manifest. Greater love has no man than this. That a man gave his life for his friends. Brothers and sisters, he didn't die for you because you are good. He died for you because he is good. So no matter how bad your case is, he can still give you answers. I can't hear your amen. amen. When you look at the cross, one thing that occurs to you is that Satan is totally defeated. Can I hear you say he's defeated? defeated. Shout it louder, he's defeated. defeated. One thing you see at the cross is that he wore the crown of thorns. So everything that is called toiling and suffering ended at the cross. Look at the cross. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. And see him rise from the dead. You know that your reality has been established. I am the son of God. Are you the son of God? Yes. I'm asking, are you the son of God? Yes. You are his own. Can you imagine the governor's child begging? Can you imagine Tinubu's child begging? No, you are not hearing me. If you hear my voice, say yes. yes. You know the investigation they were doing against the president of the U.S., whether it's correct or not, but the, the, they made an allegation. Look at the allegation. His son, when he was vice president, his son's name is called Hunter. Hunter has no training in 
no, no knowledge of anything in uh, oil and gas. But the company in Ukraine that deals with oil and gas employed Hunter, the son of the vice president of America, and was paying him a million dollars to sit on their board. The father is vice president. They employed him. He has no, no knowledge. As at the time they employed him, he was smoking crack cocaine. That's the truth. It's on public record. And they employed him, paying him $1 million. And then the government of Ukraine was investigating that company for fraud. And the man in the board is a son of the vice president of the United States. And United States was to give Ukraine an head of a billion dollars. And the vice president of America went to Ukraine and told them, if you don't fire this prosecutor investigating that company, you won't get a million dollars. The man was fired that evening. And America sent them a billion dollars. So now people are saying they tied the two things. Maybe the president did a bad thing or whatever at that time. I don't know. All I know is that power spoke. Connection good. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm in the wrong place. You see, there's a place you stand, life obey you. And how many of you are standing with Jesus? As you are hearing me today, let life obey you. Stop looking at yourself as poor. And if you are one of those that came to church for benevolence, we recognize you. But after you have collected one benevolence, don't collect again. You know why? Nobody can become great by benevolence. You don't need benevolence, you need blessing. The hand that made others rise, let it rest on you. If a man gave you a bag of rice, rice will finish. If a man gave you a million naira, a million naira will finish. Just pay one rent and another, the money is gone. But if hand came on you, can you, can you lift up your hand? May that hand be the hand of God. Amen. Now put that hand on your head and shout, I am blessed. I am blessed. Bring it up. Now, when the blessing rests on you, everything changes. That's what you need. That's what you see at Calvary. That the curse was lifted. And a man is blessed. And now let me take you to something different. If you help me say yes. You see, all of us here are blessed. Somebody say blessed. But listen. You see, a Christian cannot be so poor that he can't feed. Hello? If you have my voice, say yes. All of this thing you hear, you know, I cannot feed myself. I cannot feed myself. That's not in church. We can have the poor in our midst, but we can't be the poor. You can believe me or you can believe nonsense. But listen to this. The Bible says very clearly, I've been young and now I'm old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Can I hear you say, I'm the righteous? I cannot be forsaken. I, be forsaken. I, won't I won't beg. Louder voice. I am the righteous. I, am the righteous. I, cannot, be I cannot be forsaken. I will not beg. I will not beg. Once again, I am the righteous. I, am the righteous. I cannot be forsaken. I, be forsaken. I, won't I won't beg. Now, do you believe that Bible verse? Yes. So every, no matter how broke, no matter how bad it is, you can't go to bed without food on your table. The Bible says, even the poor in Zion shall be satisfied with bread. So basic provision must be there. So I say basic. basic. So be basic. basic. Can I allow that basic? basic? So please, never expect to go to bed hungry. God is a source. He is the source of every good thing. And you will not be denied. 
Shout amen like one of us. Amen. But you see, we don't live at the basic. Somebody say basic. We don't live at the small. We don't live at this nonsense. Amen. We go higher. Somebody say, I go higher. I go higher. What do you mean you go higher, pastor? You know, I gave an illustration in the first service. I mean, any one of you know what they call free to air? Eh? Uh -uh. Anybody know what is called free to air? You know, Life Center Network is on free to air. Okay, look at it this way. Amen. We are dealing with free to air. All you need is a decoder. You don't pay anybody. Eh? And you are watching anything that shows up. Come on, talk to me. The person with DSTV is paying. You don't pay. You just smile. I say, nobody, they charge me anything. But the bad thing about free to air is this. That you've been watching movies of uh, 1970. No, you are not hearing me. The only football you are watching is the Canon One Court Age. You are not hearing me. Ah, huh? the music they play is Egwa <laughs> Boche. You are not hearing me. That's what you see. But listen to me. Even if you are having that decoder, if you want to watch anything brand new. There are channels in that decoder that only opens when you pay. Come on, talk to me. Even with those who do DSTV, there's the one they call basic. What do they? What's the name of that one? Compact. You know what means compact? Compact means is uh, you you is portable. <laughs> you can manage it like that. But there's the one they call premium, right? That's the one that shows you everything. Please talk to me. Now listen to me, brothers and sisters. There is a kingdom dimension higher than daily bread. And that dimension is accessible by covenant. Somebody shout covenant. covenant. Say loud that covenant. covenant. Follow me now. We're going to rush this from now. Can I shout Covenant. Even in the Old Testament, there was a general covenant that people had with God. And there were individual covenants that people shared with God. Are you still with me? Huh? For example, David had a covenant of salt with God that gave him the kingdom. Men had covenants with God that kept increasing them and blessing them and lifting them. I lift my hand over you. By this meeting this morning, you have a covenant of abundance. If I hear you are amen, you'll go higher. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, he said, you know the grace that's in Christ Jesus, that he was poor. Sorry. He's talking about God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. God wants all grace abounding to us. Somebody say, all grace. All grace. Shout it louder, all grace. all grace. Speaking like thunder, All grace. All Listen, there's a basic level of prosperity for all of you. Somebody say basic. basic. That basic is this. That you have enough to handle whatever life throws at you. That's the basic. That's the entry level. Lift up your right hand. Let me hear you scream like thunder. I will have enough, will have enough. to handle, to handle. anything life throws at me. Say it again like thunder. I will have enough to handle anything life throws at me. Those at the back, wave your hand and shout it. I will have enough to handle everything life throws at me. Shout amen like you mean it. That's the entry level. Please look up here. Prosperity is simply that whatever life brings to you, you have enough to handle it. That's your portion. But there is a higher level than that. That's a middle class. This is a level where your cup is running over in business results. Not just that you have enough, but you have capacity for 
generosity. Some may say capacity for generosity. You know, there are people that every time you ask them for something, it looks as if you are taking blood from them. Ah, huh? But I want to be somebody that I can actually do generosity with joy. Somebody say with joy. Can I say it louder with joy? Lift up your hand. As you leave here now, your cup run over. Your business prosper. You will be able to meet your own needs and help others. The day your amen comes in, let your portion begin. Now, a lot of people in church got to this point and think they have arrived. No, don't arrive here. Keep going higher. There's another dimension. Somebody said dimension. This is where you become a kingdom proof and a reference point. We are people, when they are praying, they are praying to be like you. No, you didn't hear me. Are you hearing me? You see, in ministry today, there are men we pray to be like. Uh, you didn't hear me. I told you, I have a boy was saying to some leaders some years ago. He said, he said, where I am now, I cannot pray to be like you. It's you that will pray to be like me. And he's not lying. He's not arrogance. He's the truth. No matter your career now, there are people in your career that when you are looking ahead, you are praying to get to where they got to. What I'm saying, is that true? They have become reference points. I said to them earlier, there's a difference between an anthill and a hill. And there's a difference between a hill and a mountain. When you have never seen a mountain before, you will think a hill is anything. You didn't hear me. That's why people, Enugu, they call their place Enugu. Enugu means the land of mountains. No, you're not hearing me. But there's no mountain in Enugu. It is that their fathers have never seen a mountain before. So they saw an elevated ground. They call it mountain. Enugu people, apologies. No, you're not hearing me. If you live in Enugu, and you move, you find out that even the one in Enugu cannot be called a hill. It looks like an anthill compared to real mountains. Have you gone to Cameroon Mountains? Compare that to Enugu, then Enugu looks like an anthill. But then, when the mountains are having meeting, and Cameroon Mountain comes, Kimanjaro will look at you and say, oh boy, what are you doing here? We ask for mountains, not for hills. Because to Kilimanjaro, Cameroon Mountain is a hill. But can you imagine Mount Everest? Mountains are moving and then Nugu came. They said, they, said they said there's a meeting of mountains and Kilimanjaro looks at him. I said, he said, this is a plain land now. Is there anything we are seeing here? Everest, look at it. Everest. Say, in fact, this one is even a pit. It doesn't look like mountain. There are some of you that are moving about thinking you have arrived. You are an anthill. You are employing 10 people and your head is swelling. There are people who employ 140,000. There are people employing 4,000, 5,000. Members of Gateway, hear me. When they mention wealth in Port Harcourt, you will be the one. <laughs> Lift your hand above your head. That factory will be the biggest of its kind. Your business will go across nations. You will not be small and you will not die small. Your generation will be thanking God for you. If I hear your amen, you will take your portion. I am looking at a young boy here that will design that app and sell it for a billion dollars. I am looking for that boy that will start a financial company 
that we transfer generations if you are hearing me shout i am the word i lift my hand over now and i command let the mountains begin to arise let the mountains begin to arise somebody here we have a real estate company with a thousand houses somebody with ten thousand houses i can't hear your amen somebody will build the city i declare in your profession you'll be the best in the nation and best around the world a young man passing through gateway must be world footballer of the year i can't hear your voice here you can't be the local actress you can't be the local comedian you can't be the local musician i lift my hand over you as i stand and speak over you may you become a mountain may you become a mountain may you become a mountain never settle for smallness where you are going it's too far i said to you some time ago if you see an ego that jumped higher than a turkey and is fanning himself and celebrating that ego needs to see psychia you are an ego start comparing your, stop comparing yourself with people around you when you look at them and say well i'm doing better than him i'm doing better than him because you bought a small car you are doing better than him where you are going you haven't started you see, you walk into a gateway. You see me keep talking and all of that. Listen to me. Our journey is still doing press up. Oh. No, I don't think you heard me. Gateway is still about to start. Somebody asked me, when are we celebrating anniversary? I said, well, start a new anniversary from next year, August. The first year we came here, we call it year one. First of all, God's now becomes our anniversary. It's our first year in the altar of mercy grounds. This is year one. And we are hoping to do seven years here before we go to year two. <laughs> Lift your hand above your head. The God that makes men great. As you are hearing me now, let that God take hold of you. I'm going to say this the last time. The God that makes men great. As he hears you are amen, let his hand rest on you. In the first service, I spoke to them on the laws of abundance. In this service, I'll talk to you on the stewardship of covenant abundance. Somebody say stewardship. You know, God calls us stewards. Can somebody say steward? A steward means somebody that manages something for somebody else. Listen, God is going to prosper you. But understand that the money is not yours. The money is whose own? Trust is built gradually. Oh. Anybody that is going to work with God, God does not trust you immediately. You build trust gradually. God gives you one opportunity and sees how you manage it. Gives you a second one, sees how you manage it before he decides how far to take you. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. It's the same thing in relationship. Anybody that keeps abusing trust in relationship, it doesn't last long. You are not hearing me. People can forgive and manage and all of that, but after some time, they put their feet down. This person is a distraction and they walk away. Anybody that keeps abusing trust, you won't have favor for long. So when you are a steward of God, please learn not to abuse his trust. Somebody say, I won't abuse his trust. I can't hear you. I say, I won't abuse his trust. And how you keep trust is what you do. Somebody say, what I do. 1 Samuel 2 verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 3. Uh, Hannah was talking and said, talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let no arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. Not words, actions. God weighs action. So there is a scale where actions are weighed. 
If you doubt me, ask a man called Belshazzar. He finished drinking and God said, we weighed this thing in the balance. It didn't ring well. So your throne is commuted. I lift my hand over you. This small thing God started in you, this small favor, this small opportunity, this small relationship, this small help, may it not be taken from you. By him, actions are And the beginning of stewardship is that you understand that everything is owned by God and that you have the privilege of custody. You have the privilege. You know, one of the reasons I pastor the way I pastor is because I know I don't own church. I know that I am privileged to be in custody of this place. I raise my children. I pray for them. I trust God that they will serve God. But this church is not an inheritance for children. This is the house of God. If God calls any one of them, let him call them. I won't call them. Are you hearing my voice here? I won't call them. I want God to use them his own way. No, you are not hearing me. If God uses my son to be a prime minister or a president to anywhere and changes a nation for God, it's also good as good as being pastor of a church and preaching people to Christ. Because any platform you occupy can change something. Find your platform. It may not look like church talk, but I will talk it until it enters somebody's brain. Am I talking to somebody here today? So, when you walk into the house of God, you are a trustee. You are in custody. Manage it well. Let God see what you are doing. And like it and honor you. You know in 1 Chronicles 29. When David and the people made an offering to God. David made a comment. He said to God. Every good thing comes from you. He said it's our privilege to give to you. Be okay let me read for you 1 Chronicles 29. Even if I read a long passage. Uh, start from verse 7. Start from verse 7. He said, and gave for the service of the house of God, of gold, 5,000 talents, of silver. He talks about what people gave in the service of God. Verse 8. And they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Gahiel the Gesonite. People were giving an offering to build the temple that Solomon built later. This was when David was raising the money. Next verse. Then the people rejoiced. The people did what? For they had offered how? You see, when people give God willingly, they do what? They rejoice. They rejoice because, because with perfect heart, they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with what? Gradual. He asked them to give to build God the tabernacle. They gave willingly. And when they finished, they started shouting and rejoicing. Why? Because... They knew they were stewards. Now look at what next. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou Lord God of Israel our father forever and ever. Are you sleeping or hearing me? Okay, look at the next one. Thine, O Lord, is what? Follow me. Is what? The greatness. And what? And what again? And what again? And what again? He said, yours is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and what? Majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord. And thou art exalted as head above all. Now look at the next line. Both riches and honor come of thee. And thou reignest over all. And in thy hand is power and might. And in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. This is a man that just gave an offering. He's not talking about God, you repay me. God, you repay me. I just sold the sacrifice for you. He's saying, God, what a privilege to honor you. 
What a privilege to serve you with what you gave me. Riches and honor come from you. You own glory. You own my this man is not doing a transaction. This man is doing worship. Are they hearing me? He's a steward of the blessings of God. He's not there tightening the faith. He said, the word I gave, what happened? What happened? I don't care what happened. You return what belongs to somebody. Look at verse 13. Now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. Verse 14. But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able, able to offer so will so ability to offer is a privilege. They are not hearing. Is anybody hearing me here today? Ability to offer is a privilege. He said, what is me and my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort that we could give this? Ha! For all things come of thee and of thy own have we given thee. Everything. That's the... Anytime you are talking about what made David king, don't forget this. It's a mentality of stewardship. Somebody say stewardship. Can I say stewardship? Can you imagine the number of people that their car cannot bring people to church? Can you imagine the number of I was talking to a young man in church. He was talking about his accommodation. He couldn't pay accommodation. He was begging me to assist him. I said, who, do, who lives with you? He said, nobody. I said, I have a one-room self contempt He said, yes. I said, all my life, I never lived anywhere without people living with me. They didn't have to beg me. I asked them to come. You are not hearing me. It's a privilege. I told you many years ago, when family members were bothering me, and they, this one will call, this one will call, this one will call. One that was so angry. I said, no, no, but I've done this and other. And God asked me, he said, do you want the one that calling or the one calling them? I didn't need advice. No, you didn't hear me. I didn't need advice. I advised myself to be the one that calling, not the one calling them. Can you lift up your hand? Receive the privilege yeah. of stewardship. Yeah. I can't hear your amen. amen. That's the attitude to carry into everything. First Timothy 6, 17 says, charge them that are rich not to be high-minded. And you are the one that is rich. Who is the rich here? Okay, let me, let me take a census. If you are rich here, lift your hand high. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Can you point to heaven and say heaven? Yes, I, declare, I declare I am rich. I am rich. Yes. Lift up. May that hand you lifted be counted in heaven. So how do you steward abundance? The first way is be content in the now and persistent for the next. Be contented in what you have now while you are pursuing the next thing. No matter how things are now, smile. Be thankful while you are pursuing the next thing. Everybody look up here. Everything you are looking for will not come at the same time. And they may not come at the time you expect. Be grateful. Somebody say grateful. grateful. Gratitude is saying thank you for now. Why hunting for next? Most people don't say thank you. They're just very committed to pursuing the next thing. And until you say thank you, God doesn't say take more. Be content. Somebody say content. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Somebody sent me a text. He said, seven months since I got married. I don't know what is happening. I don't know what is happening. Pastor, it's so frustrating. Seven months, I keep trying. I know I'm not getting pregnant. Seven, not seven years. Seven months. I wanted to write out to the person and say, what happened after seven days? You should have gotten angry after seven days. You waited for seven months. It's, it's long now. It's after the seven days you have sent me a text. I said, Pastor, we have tried for seven days. I never see Belen. I 
don't you thank God that God has given you a husband? And love your husband. And if the belly never come, use it to do boyfriend and girlfriend at home. Just be jollying. What thing is that? Why should a woman that just got married be pregnant in seven months? I beg. Nonsense. Chop life small. Travel with your husband small. Go to parties small. Not from day one you are coughing and vomiting. And after that you became mama bum boy. And life goes downhill from that day. Turn the fire Satan. Am I talking to somebody here today? God is giving you a chance to enjoy your marriage. You are talking nonsense. Be content. Somebody say I'm content. You are, your car is jalopy. Be content. There are people praying to have that. From that jalopy, we're going to get brand new. Be content. You are living in self-content. Be content. There are people where they are, oh, no content. Be content. Are they hearing me here? Gratitude is the beginning of the journey of destiny. I tell the pastors I mentor, if you see any pastor who goes to church Sunday by Sunday, I was counseling our our Kigwe young man. And uh, he was saying, uh, I'm, pa Papa, I'm getting frustrated. I put in everything. All, the, all I see is 200 people. So I said, move around Port Harcourt. I said, and show me how many churches have 200 people. I said, until you learn gratitude, God will keep you in suspension. He said, hey, I've been trying. Everything is 200. Hey, hey, we sometimes we get to 350 and we come back to 200. It's like 200 is the barrier. Papa, lay hands. I said, I'm not laying hands. Before I destroy what God has started, you need to get sense. When you walk into church on a Sunday morning and all you saw is 100 people, thank God for 100. If God was allocating people by measuring people, they wouldn't give you. You think you're all here now because I qualify to pastor you. Ooh. No, you are here because he gave you to me. That's why you are here. <laughs> if it's because of qualification, you know, when people see big church, they start worshiping the man of God. Before you worship me, no. Na allocation. Na Jehovah say, I put hand on you. Go in my name. Does it mean you are not working hard and working hard, but it's not because of the working hard? Men don't rise because they try. There are people who are more hard working than me who didn't see half of you. This is second service. People are out in the sun there. Sun, they beat them. Let it be there where they came late. But let's. Wait, wait, wait. But see this hall full cannot be full. People are outside. Who oh, you think that is my prayer that brought you? He said, Kai, that man, you know they eat. No lie, no lie. I chop well yesterday. <laughs> Lift your hand above your head. The God that gave me, may he give you. Yeah? you come to church and church reduce ask them ever we have had one day since get to a start of an emergency prayer meeting that the way I say church today people reduce oh. we do emergency prayer meeting and fasted my wife asked her if I've afflicted her with a fasting before 
Because church, the income didn't come. If the income didn't come, it's coming. How do you steward resources for God? Keep investing and multiplying your resources. Doing your business well and growing your economy is managing things well for God. When the man gave a talent to this one, another, another, the one that didn't multiply the talent, he cursed him. He, dis he, 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 he locked up the person. If your business is not growing, you are insulting God. If your business is not growing, you are, you are messing with grace. The man whose talent was hidden, God did not praise him. God locked him up. You can't afford for your business without. What we are saying be content, we mean be content but be firing. So while I'm telling the pastor, calm down, I'm telling you, work hard, but don't, he that believe shall not make haste. Never be content in mediocrity. No, 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 no. You're fighting. If you're here, say yes. yes. Last year, uh, my business income level was at uh, 500 million, 200 million, 100 million, 50 million, and all that. This year, I am targeting. That's why when we come for first fruit, I say, where you were last year, don't put yourself there again. I am targeting that this year it will get to 2 billion. I'm targeting you do this and all that. You are setting your hand. You are working on, you are looking for opportunities up and down because that thing you are doing is something you're going to account before God. I'm a musician. Last year, I ministered on five platforms. This year, I'm trusting God. I'm going to go on 40 platforms because your talent, God gave you the gift. You are, what you are using it to do is your gift back to God. Anything that you are doing, multiply it. Do more, serve more, invest more, produce more results. That's how to steward your talent and gift. It's not just giving seed. It's succeeding. God wants his people to succeed. If you have my voice, say yes. The third thing, live in simplicity and enjoy the beauty of life. That's how to, that's how to steward things. Live in simplicity. Don't complicate your life. Live at your level. Life is in stages and men are in phases. Life is in phases and men are in sizes. Live at your size. What you can't afford now, hate it until you can afford it. No, you're not hearing me. Some of us now hate private jet until we can afford it. No, you didn't hear me. They say private jet. I say, how can you waste God's money on private jet? And then you can afford it. You say, Kai, this is kingdom business. <laughs> Are you hearing me here? You can't afford a Lamborghini. It's a waste of money. If you can afford it, ah, <laughs> the blessing of God, they make it rich. There are some cars you enter. You will ask yourself, have I entered a car before? No, you are not hearing. You see, because you live in Nigeria, you have never seen things before. All of these cars, they tell you they bought 500 million. And you say, how can? How can? Have you seen the inside? If you didn't see the inside, you will add money on top. <laughs> Lift up your hand. My God will prosper you. Amen. But while you are at this level, enter Keke with joy. Enter with joy. Live a simple life. You cannot take your wife right now to Dubai for a holiday. No challenge. Pleasure park, uncle. <laughs> Enjoy your life. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. 
never postpone life because of the level where you are. Are they hearing me? Don't postpone life because life is one. And there's no stage of life you are going to live again. I was with a man yesterday. Now, this guy is a wealthy person, popular person. Are you with me? National person. He's 70 something. And we are talking. And I noticed the way he held his leg. I said, Sir, what? He said, Oh. He said, He said, Old age is real. That's the word he said. He said, Old age is real. I left there thinking about that. I said, I said, Sir, what? He said, Old age is real. This is a national figure. A man that controls mm -mm. old age is real. There are some life you don't chop now, you won't chop again. So that you don't have cash doesn't mean you can't at least take your family out. Stop postponing when Things get better, things get better, things get better, things no, they get better. It's people that make decision. Are they hearing me? So you say, I can't celebrate my children by day. I don't have money. You don't need to have money. You need your child to know you celebrated him. You may not be able to buy a cake or whatever. But gather the family together. Make something special for him. And tell him we love you. Do that for your wife. Am I talking to somebody here? To simplify your life. That's how to steal what, what you have. Hey, are they hearing me? That one room that you have now. Make it your palace. Honor that room. Honor that room. Love that room. Not every time you come there, you, you get angry. You sigh. You complain how you have mess ahead of you. Simplify your life. And enjoy the beauty of life. Life is in phases. Are you still with me? Another thing, how to steward your resources. Make your whole life available to the kingdom of God. Make your whole life available. That's how to steward your resources. My time, my talent, my treasure, everything is kingdom available. People that look at God and tell God that they own something are in trouble. You don't own your time. You don't decide which time you give God. There is a man whose business will never rise because it's Wednesday. God can't take it. God said, I will hold you on this Wednesday. Since Bible studies are anathema to you, I won't take you beyond this level. I own your life. There are men who can rise because their talent can serve God. They hang around in church. All manner of departments. Look at what happened here yesterday. I was looking at what our advisor was doing. His talent added much fun. What I'm saying, is that true? If I came here to do that thing, he has failed before he started. Everybody has their own talent. If I stood there before I quote two Bible verses, you have started going home. Because what we are doing that time didn't demand Bible verse. Come on, are you hearing me? Everybody have their what they contribute. There are some people, just the addressing in church addresses people. You see some people, the person is beautiful but decently dressed. You see it continually. It teaches you you don't have to expose body to be beautiful. There are people
people, their service is a lecture. The way they serve tells you you are broker than them. See them serving. Sometimes we walk around. You see His Royal Highness running up and down the building side. You see, okay, running up and down the building side. You see these people running around with me on protocol. Okay, in the, uh, what's his name now? The one in Aji. Anderson. All of them running up and down. They are not broke men, no. They are not broke men. When you see them running around, go to the front there now. You see those people that are control, putting cars there. Some of them have their own tenants. They are not broke men. They are running up and down. I was asking somebody a few days ago when I was talking. I said, in this choir that sang, there are four PhDs that I know and maybe some that I don't. So when you come to church and you try to, you, you, you are on, even bachelor, you never see. <laughs> make your whole life available to God. Everything about you, make it available to God. Stop the arrogance. Any office you occupy, make it available to God. Let church know where you are serving. If you're in this ministry, that ministry, that means I remember when COVID came, we wanted to broadcast. And I didn't know that one of the big television stations and radio stations, that the person that is a regional manager was our member and nobody told me. People come to church and they don't know. And that day, we are paid for advertisement and some that. And another church bigger than us went and paid from behind and they took us off. And then they told me, said, this person is your member. The person comes to church. I said, what? I called the resident person. Look for the person. They found the person. I was shocked. You come to this church and we don't know you. That evening, that big church paid so much amount of money. They yanked them at the time they're supposed to do and put us, we broadcast. No, you're not hearing me. What we paid was less than one tenth of what they paid. Brothers and sisters, you can't be hanging around and we don't know you. You are in that company. You are in that place. You are in that place. I always tell people, the people that hide from their pastor are people with strange secrets. Number one, look up here. I am not the kind of pastor that collects money from people. There's none of you here that occupy any position in this church that I've ever prophesied once over you and asked you to sow seed since you started Gateway. If there's anyone like that, come. I'm talking here now. It's not in the secret. There is no big man in this church that I have any need under heaven I have called before. If there's anyone, let the person show up now. There's none. Uh, you know, we are trying to build this thing. We are trying to do this one. That's why I'm calling you now for you to do anything. I don't care what you have. I will come dedicate your house, dedicate your office, dedicate everything and walk away. I don't trouble people. Why? Because nobody ever has honor who is a beggar. I have never begged. I will never beg. When church was small, when I was living in somebody's boy's quarter, pastoring this church, had somebody that was a manager in some beggar. Has somebody that was a manager in Shell. Has somebody that was a manager in Sodexo. In fact, two managers of Sodexo. Our people that I know, we are coming to church. Pastor Jemima, thank you for coming today. She was, she can tell you. Pastor Matthew is here, they can tell you. They were there. And not one of them did I ask for money to pay for her rent. They saw me. They didn't feel like giving to their pastor. I ignored them and continued living in my one room. And kept moving. My when they dropped me there. The brother that was a bank manager who had an accommodation used the plywood under his staircase. That became my house. And I was pastoring this church, living under somebody's plywood in the staircase. 
I will rather die than manipulate men or beg or borrow. Turn the fire setter. What I carry is bigger than nonsense. So when people come to you and say that, you know, if I tell them the contract I got, they will be expecting me to give. Excuse me. Who are you? How much is your contract? How rich are you? You see, that's the way I think. Today is Easter Sunday. As I woke up in the morning, I just said, Jesus, thank you. The first thing I did was, okay, my father and the Lord. I sent him a message, happy Easter, and I sent a seed for the Easter. Ah, my grandfather and the Lord. I sent him a seed, happy Easter. I said this. I thought of a church. I promised this church to help them buy equipment. I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about personal money. I send them the money to buy that. Oh, my father, the pastor that I passed, served under. Those are the four things I thought about this morning before leaving my house. Not because I have, but because I know that's how I have. That's how I have. That's how I have. I can't be stupid. Everything available to God. That's how I have. I'm not saying to excite you, that's what I have. They know. When I was doing my birthday, and my former pastor sent me some money in dollars. So I shouted, I called him. I said, why will you do that? He said, you keep doing that. Let me do once too. That's what he told me on the phone. He said, you keep doing that. Let me do once too. You cannot live your life like you are. Make your whole life available. Make your, listen, become God's hand of generosity to the world. That's how to become a kingdom steward. I declare over you. 2024 will announce you. Yeah. And an important, you can't walk in abundance without the presence of God. Lift up your hand and say, Father. Father. Shout it like thunder, Father. Father. I want your presence. Want presence. And if you want to live in the presence of God, stay in the word of God. Are you with me? Be a person of God's first obedience and the God's first sacrifice. And go with the spirit of gratitude and patience if you want to live in the presence of God. If you are somebody who tells God, anything you put in my hand is available to you, you can't be poor. Are you with me? Are you with me? Let me say this to you. The greatest thing in this kingdom is motive. Somebody say motive. Can I say motive? Why are you doing what you are doing? I have a few pastor friends. Many years ago, some of them started mentoring programs for assistant pastors. And every time I go there, I see some things some people are doing. And I find that they just want pastors to submit to them. They just want pastors to submit to them. And I say to God, search my heart. And know if I'm looking for submission. I don't, I don't forget when we went for Impact Liberia. I was preaching. I didn't know the wife of the vice president was in the crowd. When she came, they didn't tell me. The protocol just picked her. Were you with me in Liberia Impact? Okay. When they came, they just picked her and kept her in the VIP area. The vice president of Liberia, the wife, came before the meeting and all of that. When I was talking, I told the pastors, because Liberia, Moravia Civic Center was full, and there are people outside, and crowd, just like you here, here, and everywhere. I said to the pastors, I said, I didn't come here to look for anybody to submit to me. I came to teach you basic things that I have learned. Not that I'm an expert, but things are helping me. I'm coming to teach you on that. And they were excited. I finished. I was going to the hotel. And they called me and said, somebody is looking for you. I said, no, I, I just finished. I can't. No, they say somebody you can, cannot say you can't see. So I found out, was the wife of the vice president. And she came. And she pointed at me. He said, who asked you to say that you don't want anybody to be your son or daughter? He said, I am your daughter. And I'm looking at the person talking to me. 
And I said to myself, I came here knowing I didn't look for anybody. Only God sends people to you. Stop behaving as if any nonsense. You say, I looked at what they were doing. And I said, no. It's only God I'm looking for. Only God. And I said, bring the pastor. Like you don't need to pay tight. You don't need, just gather. Let me teach you what. I, and we kept moving. You know, from impact, from that time till today, we have not done any impact meeting in Nigeria or outside Nigeria that I collected on our own once. There's no program, no money raised, nothing done. I've collected on the once in impact. Not once. You know why I'm telling you that? Your motive matters. When you see pastors gather in thousands, I'm not looking for them for my destiny. I'm looking for them because I believe in the kingdom. What are you, what is your motive about wealth? Why do you want to prosper? So you can compete with village people and show them you are the, you are the dogu. When you come, you throw a brother and five girlfriends are following you. Thunder fire queens. I lift my hand over you. Everything God gave me, take it. Stand to your feet. Do we try today? This is the end of Peniel. And uh, if I didn't keep you this long, I would be doing myself bad. Many of you have not hung around me for a long time. Some of you just came around to see my face today. Some of you are prodigal children. I welcome you back home from the far country. Praise the Lord. Now lift your two hands higher than your head. Are you hearing me? And say, Father, Father I, believe I believe in the God that prospers me. That prospers me. Lift your voice and pray. No, 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 stop. Anybody that cannot pray with a loud voice doesn't have my DNA. Can you lift your hand? Can I say, Father? Father! In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus I believe in the God believe in the that prospers me. You are my you God. Are my now lift your voice and pray. Pray with authority. Pray with boldness. Somebody shout amen like thunder. I put the oil of God on this ground. And I sanctified for the covenant of abundance. If you don't mind, pull your shoe. Lift your hands and wave it to the king. Can I say, Father? Father. Louder than your neighbor, Father. Father. I declare. I declare. I declare. I declare. You are the God that prospers me. I receive the covenant of abundance from you in the name of Jesus. Father, from today, all grace abounds toward me. I have all sufficiency in all things. I abound unto good works in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare from the east, from the west, the north, the south, the come to me. My gates are open. Men bring to me the forces of the Gentiles. In the name of Jesus, I am the head. I am not the tail. I am above. I am not beneath. In the name of Jesus, whatever I lay my hands to do, it shall prosper. In the name of Jesus. Now lay those two hands on your head. 
every blessing you expect me to prophesy over you now prophesy it over yourself in my name you have one minute to raise your voice and shout out your prophecy you are more than these lost for words dragging to the scribe Elohim Elion Al-Shelwi Your greatness is all I see There is nothing you cannot do There's no mountain you cannot do If you have said it then you will do it You have the track record of keeping your word Your Amen If I pray for you Listen to me, I told you That the supervising principle is the presence of God Someone said the presence of God Can you loud it, the presence of God Listen to me. You can't have the presence of God without making, making Jesus the Lord of your life. There are people that came here today who are not born again. There are some that got born again before I'm backstage. There are some that are bound by all kinds of addictions and evil habits, betting addiction, smoking addiction, sexual addiction, pornography addiction. There are people that want their lives to change. They want Jesus to turn them around. And you are in this building tonight, today. And you want him to be the Lord of your life. Lay your hand on your chest if you are like that. And pray with me and say, Jesus, I surrender to you. I make you the Lord of my life. Forgive my sin. Change my life. And change my story. Amen. If you pray that prayer, carry your bag and Bible, come to the altar. The first step was identification. Now, this is the step of commitment. Move now. Carry your bag and Bible. Don't leave anything on your chair. Don't let ego keep you. And don't negotiate with the Holy Ghost. Nobody gets saved on his own terms. You give your life to Jesus. On his, if he says move, you move. If you start disobeying from the point of your altar call, when will you stop disobeying? Move quickly. Move quickly. Move quickly. Move quickly. Move quickly. Everybody lift your two hands. Awesome God. How great you are. You are God. Mighty are your miracle. We stand in all.
yoke of bondage in their life break now every addiction break now every negative habit stop now give them the power to live for you in jesus name please go this way look at that lady over there okay everybody lift your two hands and when i pray say amen and let heaven hear you lift up your hand anywhere you are found on this earth take dominion <laughs> lift up the hand money will answer to you men will answer to you life will answer to you in the name of Jesus Look up here. The kind of abundance that you've only dreamt about, the Lord open you to it this year. Money in multiple currencies. Let it answer to you this year. I command luck. Die in the name of Jesus. Amen. I trust the Holy Ghost. And every man and woman here will prosper. Amen. And I release you to be my candidate. He said to me, the richest men in my city will come from me. Therefore now, as heaven records your amen, may you be the one I nominate. Amen. Go! and be rich I welcome you to this covenant of abundance in the name of the Father of the Son and of the Holy Ghost sit down for one minute sit down now when I was talking to you I didn't come to talk to you to manipulate you on giving but everyone that is here knows that we have projects to do. Is that true? And one of the biggest challenges we are having is this roofing. Look up here. This, putting insulation here is what we need to do quickly because it's affecting our services, the heat. Is that true? And it's one thing to gather people, but losing them because of this is not good for us. Now, we wanted to get some companies here to do it for us. And are quoting $175 million to put this thing here. Are you with me? Others are quoting 200 and something million. We want to go out of Nigeria. and want to start buying from China and bringing it and then hiring some people to do it for us. And I believe God has given me men and women who believe in my vision and who are ready to make sacrifices to say to God, I will stand with my man of God. Now, if you are here and you can make a sacrifice of at least $1,000 and above toward the amount we need to get this, just want to buy that and bring it. Please, can you come to the altar now? Anywhere you are. Whether men have seen you before, you, they know you have it or you don't, is not the issue. But you can give God that. You are saying, Father, this is my something. Whether you have given before or not, please come to the altar. I'm giving a thousand dollars to stand with my man of God on this. Please come to the altar. And please, if you are moving, move fast. Move fast. Don't let God beg you and don't let your man of God beg you. And don't be a big man or a rich man and you can afford it. No matter what you are keeping it for and you keep it away from us. Please come. Let God speak to your heart. Let your conscience speak to you. Please come. Don't stay back. I want a thousand dollars. You give that. If you have it, you can afford it. Come to the altar. Not a vow of if God provides for me. Come to the altar. If your own level is 500, come to the altar. If your own level is 500, come to the altar. Move very quickly. Move quickly. You are giving $500 to be a part of it. Please move fast. Wherever you are standing or seated, it doesn't matter. I want you to do that.
I've given before. God knows you have given before, but he knows he needs you again. Please move quickly. While they are coming, if your own level is 250, join them and come. I want you to give in dollars so you don't have to start changing much. I want you to do that. And I want somebody here to take this challenge and say, we want to get this done. If your own is 100, please come to the altar. It doesn't matter how broke you are. I want to be a part of this. And I'm going to raise $100 anyhow. I must be part of this. And I want to earn in foreign currency. Move to the altar now. Anyway, I move fast. There are some of you from different locations. All through the project, you didn't give a dime. Now you are not making a sacrifice because you don't know that what you are enjoying there flows from here. But you are about to lose. You are about to lose. Wherever you are, if you have not given for this place, you better move. Now everybody here, you have a $100 somewhere. You are keeping it for something. Please walk to the altar and give it to God. Let there be you are covenant to escaping the Naira challenge today. Move fast. Move fast. Move fast. There are people sitting down who should be here, either for 500 or 1,000 or 100. Move quickly. That money you are saving, let God save you from it. Move quickly. Be fast. You know I won't put you under pressure if there is no need. Move quickly. You know we are not pastors who collect from people to go and live a big life. Move quickly. Fast. God bless you. The least I'm asking for this level is those who are giving uh, $50. If that's your level, come. All the money will be paid into this dollar account. You can take your phone and slap it now. Please don't come with cash on the altar and draw. Don't bring any dollar cash and draw. Pay it to the bank. Now, if you know that you can't give the dollars, but you can give 50,000 naira, come and join them. If you know you can give 20,000 naira, come and join them. I am giving my members a chance to build their church and to have their God respect them. We have asked you to give before, but we won't ask if it's not necessary. If you are moving and you have your phone and you need to check it, please take it and take what belongs to you so that nobody in the mixed multitude we take what belongs to you. If your own level is 10,000, join them. If for any reason under heaven you don't give, I'm okay with you not giving. But if you can afford it and you don't give, God also knows you didn't. Because we need your help now to get this thing done quickly. In a few months, I want to walk in here and we are ready to put our AC. Are you with me? Brother K, do we have enough AC for this place? Huh? Huh? We have bought the AC, central AC for this place. We have enough for this place. But if we put this thing, we can't put AC and we can't put this. But the moment to do this, we can begin to budget for that and put it so that before this year is over, when you walk in here, you are not looking for AC you are putting by the side. It's coming from up. It's coming on you. Give the Lord a better clap offering. We have not been careless with you. Can you lift your hands? Everyone that is giving, anyone that is sitting down that can afford 10,000, please join them. If you can afford to give that, join them. I know you need it. But God needs it now. 
will you withhold or will you be part of it? If you can, join them. If you can give five, finally join them. Everybody lift your hands. Almighty God, I kneel before you. I am doing this for your kingdom's sake. I know Nigeria is under pressure. But I know these men and women love you. And are laying the best they can at your feet. I ask you today, in the next few weeks, show them strange help. Yeah. Lord, the last time we built you a house, I told them nobody will finish that building and live without your blessing. Father, you did so many things with so many people. Many that had no chance in life owned houses, owned properties, moved to another level. Father, do it to everyone standing today. Amen. Let the covenant of wealth answer to them. Amen. I command the blessing. Amen. I decree over you. You will never call in life and somebody will not hear. Amen. You will never have a need that nobody came to help you. As you helped in this need of the kingdom, may every need of your destiny meet with God. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. Please get back to your seat. Please, the account for the Naira is still the project account. The account for the dollar. Take your phone now and snap it. Take your phone and snap it. Or get somebody that have snapped it and copy. And let them forward to you. Everybody give the Lord a beautiful clap offering this morning. Okay. It's time to close the service. And I believe God. That somebody. Somebody is about to change levels. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we take our tithes and offerings very quickly? If you are paying your tithe, run to the table of the Lord. Very fast. After that, we do our dedication, then do our Thanksgiving service and go home. Oh, there are baby dedications. We can't stop burning in this church. In fact, next month, let there be 21. Everyone that hasn't born, you will born before the year is over. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. I'm told there's one of us that is thanking God today for 63 years of life. Give the Lord praise for her. I think afterwards when we are doing Thanksgiving, they will dance out. Lift up your offerings with your two hands. Those who are sitting down casually, this is the house of God. Lift your offerings to the Lord. Everybody lift it high. Father, as they offer to you, may your love for them multiply. Amen. Lord, may they have new encounters with the Savior. Amen. Father, the grace to live right, let it be for them. Amen. The strength to serve you, let it be with them. Amen. Let there be peace in their homes. Amen. Let there be prosperity in their businesses. Amen. Take sickness from their midst. Amen. Let their lives experience the love of God. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Altar of mercy continues this week. No leave, no surrender. Somebody shout, we move. So 11 p.m. to 12 midnight, anywhere you are, join us in prayer. 
Once again, I want to thank everyone that was around for Penier. Were you blessed? Let the blessing of God you received abide in the name of Jesus. All our satellite pastors, all our leaders in the headquarters, everyone that made this beautiful, the honor of God will continue with you. Since I didn't hear your amen, why well, is it that you are angry with them? Our Bible study, the word X, continues on Wednesday. Join us. Every Saturday by 8 a.m. this month, we are going for evangelism. It's not really evangelism per se, but much publicity. So be there. I'm sure you know that the third Sunday of this month, Dr. Paul Leneche will be in Gateway. So get set for an encounter of a lifetime. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Now, every Wednesday this month, this new month, we're going to be celebrating the gifts in the house. The first Wednesday, the skit and movie makers will celebrate their gifts. Second Wednesday, music makers will celebrate their gifts. Third Wednesday, comedy gifts will celebrate their gifts. They'll make presentations before the Bible study. So, 5 o'clock, we start there something. So, we can add some fun, have a little time of prayer, and then I get into the word. And then the final week, we do the creatives that stood out. Please, if you are one of them and you have not registered with our people, do that from every location so you can present from here to the world. Praise the name of Jesus. Faith Clinic on Friday by 9 a.m. In a few days' time, I'll be having another meeting for those waiting for the fruit of the womb. Those who did a few days ago, many of them carry belly with alacrity. <laughs> now, we are doing a new group. So please... We'll be announcing that next Sunday so that you'll be ready for the day or that. And for those who are about to get married as single sisters, we'll also be doing a program for you in a few days' time. We'll be announcing that next Sunday. So please be aware of that. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Please, those who are moving up and down at the back, give us time to close the service. There are people who don't honor God but that's not the gateway culture. Young people moving up and down, stay back until service is done. God bless you. God bless you. This is our uh, penial. Stay back until that is done. Any boss that is moving now, it shouldn't be moving. Stay until we are done. Thank you very much. Praise the name of Jesus. Okay, let's take the child dedication. After that, we'll get into the ordination and thanksgiving and in the next 10 15 minutes we should be out of your face give the lord a beautiful clap praise the lord happy easter <laughs> okay today we are dedicating six children yes four from the headquarters here and two from our house churches they are multiplying already in our house churches one in enugu and one in taba praise the lord so we're going to call the names of the parents so the parents will come up and their friends and family members will be here so as you hear your name come up mr and mrs anio cochino emmanuel they are dedicated so Mr. and Mrs. John Chinedu Ibe, dedicating their daughter. Mr. and Mrs. Fred Iri Inabo, dedicating their daughter. Mr. and Mrs. Edward Ifanye, dedicating their daughter. Mr. and Mrs. Chigozerim, their son. Then Mr. and Mrs. Kinani, their son. These other two, they are in Enugu and Taba. So choir, please give us some music. Let us dance to the glory of Oh, 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 
family members. Women, G12. You didn't invite your family members for your dedication. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Dedication is it's an opportunity to be grateful to God for life. Because of time, let me not say much. Please, every Monday, first Monday of every month, unless we have impartation, prophetic impartation, that is a dedication training day. So any parent who wants to dedicate in a particular month, the first Monday of that month, please come to the Lighthouse for your dedication classes. So please, fathers, you're going to repeat after me. We'll start with fathers, the first father, one after the other. Remember your training. So let me start with the first father. Say I. I. Your name. Anioko Emmanuel Chino, sir. On behalf of my wife and family today. On behalf of my wife and family today. Formally dedicate our son. Formally dedicate our son, Anioko Chukubi Ken David. Unto the Most High God. Unto the Most High God. The next father, I. Please, can I have one of the sound people no. here assisting? I, I. Your name, sir. Mr. John. Please, can you speak up, sir? Mr. John Chinedibe. On behalf of my wife and family today. On behalf of my wife and family today. Formally dedicate. Formally dedicate. Our, our daughter, daughter. Our daughter. Please, the name. Uriel Ifechuku Ibe. Unto the Most High God. Unto the Most High God. The next father. I. I. Your name. On behalf of my wife and family today. On behalf of my wife and family today. Formally dedicate our daughter. Formally dedicate my daughter. Our daughter. Our daughter. Her name. Wealth. I'm not bringing Fred or Gary or something about. Unto the Most High God. Unto the Most High God. The last father, I. I. Your name? Edward, define Solomon. On behalf of my wife and family today. On behalf of my wife and family today. Formally dedicate our daughter. Formally dedicate our daughter. If I am Mitchell Edward. Unto the Most High God. Unto the Most High God. So all of you will say after me. I vow to look upon her, since we have more girls. So you say him for your son. I vow to look upon her. I vow, I vow to, to look, look upon her. As a gift from the Lord. As a gift from the Lord. And to bring her up. And to bring him up. In the fear of the Lord. In the fear of the Lord. By this dedication. By this dedication. I renounce. I renounce. Every claim. Every claim. Of ancestral spirit over her life. Over his life. I pray. I pray that the eye of the Lord, the eye of the Lord will be upon her. Will be upon him for good forever. For good forever. I pray. I pray that the Bible covenant, the Bible covenant of peace. Of peace, protection, protection and, prosperity and prosperity will be with her, will be with and her body, and his body shall be preserved, shall be preserved unto, a good old age. unto a good old age. She will walk into salvation, she will walk into salvation. and at death. And at death her soul, his soul and spirit, and spirit shall, belong shall belong unto the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus and let the congregation say, Amen. So stretch forth your hands and begin to bless this once. Pray for your children, parents, declare what you want to see happen in their lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these ones. We declare that these belong to you, Father. We say, oh God, their testimony shall be since I was young. And now I'm getting old. I haven't seen the righteous forsaken nor the seed begging bread. These ones will not be forsaken. They will not beg for bread. They will walk in the fullness of your purpose for their lives. They will not stray from the path of righteousness. They will know you for themselves. Everything the parents need to bring them up in the fear and nurture of the Lord. Lord, you will abundantly supply in the name of Jesus. We declare that they will be preserved unto a good old age. In the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against them shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, thank you Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Lord, I bless these children. Let their lives carry generational testimonies. The reason that we are born will be fulfilled. 
that we carry the mark of Christ. Father, that we walk in wisdom and favor. Their life will go faster than that of their mates. They will achieve on time. And they will serve Jesus. The parents will prosper. They will have whatever it takes to take care of the children. In the name of Jesus. And none of these parents will die premature. These children will not be left as orphans or bereaved of any parent. In the name of Jesus. Father, I use them as a point of contact to everyone here believing for their own children. Release their own. Command their help. Let the blessing abide in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. Congratulations. Give the Lord a beautiful clap offering. Now, today is your first day in Gateway. Can you come? I want to see you very quickly. Carry your bag and Bible walk to the altar. First day in Gateway. Carry your bag and Bible. Keep Kelly celebrating as they come. Come this way. You are blessed. You are blessed. Come closer. You are blessed. It's clap until they get here. Those who are at the back, move faster. You are taking one minute. Move quickly. Make sure you carry their bag and Bible. You are not going back to your chair. Let nobody take what belongs to you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come closer. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The blessing of God multiply with you. Go and succeed in the name of Jesus. Keep clapping. That's stay coming. God bless you. Come closer. God bless you. 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 Young man, God bless you. The hand of God be upon you for good. In the name of Jesus. Come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come closer. God bless you. You are blessed in the precious name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Before our thanksgiving. This has been our gathering from every area. We're going to pray finally for those traveling anywhere. They will go in peace. But before we do that, you see, I'm not bothered about time today. I have not seen my children in a long time. If you're not like a call police, in the next 10 minutes we'll be closing. But I'll still pray for them. There are people that came from Calabar, Okigwe, uh, Aba, Uyo, uh, Abuja, Yenegua, Lagos. Give the Lord a clap offering. Now, if somebody who just walk out from his house here came here and is in a hurry to go and is making a uh, problem because we spent more than one o'clock, I don't know why the person believes that God will be happy with that person. So please don't do that. Come down in a few minutes, we'll go. But this is our family homecoming. Even if we started one service today, we'll still be here by now. I assure you of that. If it's 7 o'clock, we'll still be here by now. I can't leave you go like that. I've been missing some of you for a long time. Somebody give the Lord a better clap offering. Okay. We have some pastors in the church to ordain today. Clap until heaven notices. Hallelujah. I thought you can do that better. Praise the Lord. Now we have 70 in all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So on behalf of the leadership of Gateway International Church and trusting in the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I hereby present to the body of Christ the following candidates for ordination into the office of a pastor. We believe that their testimonies of faith in Christ, purity of life, 
service in the body of Christ and commitment to the mission of gateway affirms them for this honor why the Lord qualifies them hallelujah so we will be beginning with the 49 from our satellite churches so now everybody will be ordained together we are okay. not doing two nations. okay praise the Lord all right so let's let's begin with the with the headquarters list hallelujah can we have can we put our hands together as we call up Okechuku Izwe here Israel Moses Israel Soje Iyala Dr. Ebere Onyeje Mrs. Peace Chigozilem Nengi Mote Ibuchim Emos Peters Dr. Love Telfi Moses Nene Bright Victor Famo Kumo Amaebe Dr. Meg Lawal Ihoma Courage Matilda Njimoho Gift Ubo Fortune Wobidi Daniel Kelly Chamberlain Uwakwe Chika Ngosu Paul Oibo, His Royal Highness John Uwakwe Oko, Favor Bose, Promise Agu, Adejo John, Greater Jackson, Graham Jumbo, Confidence Anneli, Lucky Pauline, George Ifani, Vure Joshua, Sonny Onyeke, Kayode Abobarin, Okocha Njimoho, Amy Dinking, Amos Anyekeme, Bestman Emmanuel, Humble Power Obimba, Henry Joshua, Arinze Ibeakuzie, Victor Chinkere, Bright Idu Wonyi, Precious Iruka, Franklin Ahumereze, Leslie Onyekwere, David Namani, Ifani Wise, Chooks Martins, Hilary Patrick, Chinda Gabriel, Michael Chuku, Olua Shola David, John Abo, Peter McJohn, Armstrong Abai, Peter Udobong, Kelechi Kalo, Jude Wosu, David Nolly, Shuala Godfrey, James Uyeye, Chijoke Wankwa, Enyin Naya Afulike, Chibus of Victor, Magnifica George, Obachuku Peter, Clinton Waigwe, Oliver Leo, Chidi Michael, Henry Onyacho, Michael Okere, and Gabriel Akowe. Can we put our hands together once again? Hallelujah. Now I will be leading you in this affirmation please you may share the the paper we gave with somebody close to you so let's go are you convinced that the lord has called you to the office of a pastor do you accept this call and promise to fulfill it in obedience to christ will you faithfully study live minister and defend the truth of the holy scriptures do you commit to pursuing the peace unity and prosperity of the vision and leadership of gateway international church and faithfully defend such against strife division and demonic opposition 
Will you serve to inside? Inside. My Savior and Lord of my life. I declare my faith and commitment to the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments as the Word of God. I declare my consecration to serve Christ and His body in humility and sanctification and power. I declare my willingness to make whatever sacrifice the law requires in order to win souls into the kingdom of God and grow Gateway International Church. So help me God. And the church says, Church, I want you to put your hands together as I present these men and women to you and as we welcome our lead pastor, our father, to ordain them into the office of the pastor. Give the Lord a better clap offering, Please. everyone. Like I said in the first service to those who were there, ordination is first of all a fatherly endorsement. God said concerning Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. So that's ordination. Secondly, Ordination is an impartation. It's a direct transfer of grace. God took the spirit that was in Moses and put on 70 elders. That's ordination. Thirdly, ordination is a conferment of authority. As we ordain them as pastors now, whatever obeys me should obey them. And I'm trusting the Lord that you will also obey and help them fulfill their ministry. What do I expect of them as I ordain them? Very simply, Gideon told the people going to war, you will cry, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. I expect them to carry the sword of the Lord and carry my sword. Are you with me? Are you with me? I expect them to lift my hand like Aaron and Hor lifted the hand of Moses so that Israel can achieve victory. Do you want that? Uh, do you want that? Now, we are not ordaining them because they are perfect or they are better than you or holier than you or more prayerful than you. But we are ordaining them because I know there's a little oil in their hand. What I'm expecting from them is that little oil in your hand, keep pouring it and keep pouring it because any vessel that is presented before you, that oil can fill the vessel. I can't hear your amen. amen. What do I expect from them? I expect them to honor their sent man. Any one of these people you see anywhere about doubting me for any reason is attracting a curse to themselves. When a man laid hands of ordination on you, you dare not lift your voice talking stupid. When people are talking, you either step away. Come on, are you with me? Or you open your mouth in the defense of that person. When you have an issue, you go to him personally and talk it over. There are people that have a loud mouth. Not after hands are laid on you. Am I clear? And I believe that as they serve, they will keep the rules in mind. I'm only going to read for you 2 Timothy 2 verse 5 in the Good News Translation Then I laid hands on you. It says, an athlete who runs in a race cannot win the prize unless he obeys the rules. You can serve Jesus a lifetime. And not make it unless you obey the rules of the scripture. So every one of you, 
Please obey the rules of the scripture. And beyond that, obey the rules of this house. We are ordaining you. Some of you, we are ordained before here. But we are ordaining you because gateway is a denomination. We don't recognize your old ordination. We ordain you to serve under our assignment. Am I clear? Uh, am I clear? Yes, so we called you pastor because we ordain there. But now you are in our system. So you obey the rules of the house. Everybody rise up. Let's stretch a hand toward them. I want you to pour the love of God on them. Bless them. As that the hand of the Spirit of God rests upon them. Please, all the pastors, when I finish, stand in the middle, stand anywhere. As I pass, you put the something on them so that we can do that in one minute. In the name that's above every name, every grace He put in me. Every honor he put in me, every glory he put in me, I put it on you. Whatever it takes to fulfill, you are calling in the name of Christ. Let it rest on you. Sickness and death will be far from you. Evil will be far from you. The authority of the gospel is put on you. You will speak as an oracle. Heaven and earth obey your voice. Darkness bow before you. You will manifest the authority of Jesus. Every grace you see in me is put on you today. Whatever obeys me, obey you. The honor of God rests upon you. You will carry a new glory. You will carry a new power. The systems of this life bow to you. The hand of God multiply with you. You will walk in a dimension of glory like you have never known before. In the precious name of Jesus, everything you do will prosper. The world will hear you. Generations will hear you. In the name of Jesus, fire upon in your life. The glory of God will manifest in you. Nothing you pursue will escape you. You will go forward. Revelations of God are power with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hand toward them. Pray for them in the Holy Ghost. Eto beshe tele kepe diya talate hiya man de preso ha ja teli para ete kia pe hiya karete jehe praheta. Somebody shout amen. And Jesus breathed upon them and said, "As my Father has sent me, so send I you." every one of you from today hear me when a child sits at the shoulder of the mother the child's head is lifted higher than the mother the hand of the child can reach where the mother's hand can reach you sit on my shoulder from today anything I could do you will do more The strange help of God is manifest in your life from now to the rest of your life. Heaven will hear you. The earth will obey you. Demons will submit to you. I declare that in your hand the kingdom will prosper. This kingdom will not suffer loss under you. And anything in you that's incompatible with the kingdom leave you today. I release you to this order of kingdom service as a pastor in this house. In the name of Jesus. Rise, you are blessed. Celebrate them. Can the pastor stand there and welcome them as a pastor? Just greet them.
Congratulations. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Can they move through this way so that we be faster? Pastors, you can hang over there so we can be pastor. God bless you. you can be faster. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Can the pastors go up there so that this place can be easier for them to pass? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Move faster, move faster. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We'll take pictures after now. God bless you. 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 Please don't block the access there. God bless you. 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 Somebody clap and celebrate this man of God. God bless you. 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 Can they move a bit faster? Who have not greeted? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Where are they move faster? God bless you. 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 Hallelujah. Where is the sister celebrating her 63rd birthday? Sister Agnes. You're going to see her. Is she here? Is she around? Where is she? Help me celebrate her as she comes. Where is this one? Hallelujah. You may be seated for a minute. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Brethren in the Lord, I come to give thanks. My name is Agnes Igonisea. Pastors, come down. Go ahead. I come to give thanks. I've given, I did surgery last year. And I come to testify on the 31st. But along the line, when I was praying, the Lord said I should come and give special thanks. So that is why I'm here. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a better clap offering for her. 63 years. And God has kept her strong. And I declare no more sickness. No more surgeries. As you came to thank him, life will celebrate you. You'll find peace in your family. And your generation are blessed. In Jesus' name. Now stand up everyone. Lift up your thanksgiving envelope. Can the musicians be on the altar now? Wave it to the Lord. As we finish dancing, I'll pray for you and then you start going. Everyone that came from any location, you will go in peace. Let me tell you what will happen. As you are going now, your level in life has changed. You will find that some of you as you are going within one month of today, your location will have a land they didn't buy. Some of you that came here without a car, you have a car before the year is over. By the time you are returning next year, your testimony is that you are living in your own house. 
If you believe that, wave that thanksgiving to the Lord with a shout of prayer. Father, bless your people. As we dance to celebrate you now, let a new thing happen in our lives. In the precious name of Jesus. Let's move now. Wave your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise. All the praise of my life, I'll praise you. Everything I have, I get to be bad. Hey, for your love, Lord, I say I'm grateful. Yes, we love you, thank you, you get to die for me. Say over. Oh, my love, hey. oh, my love. Hey. I am glad I am, my great provider. I say, hey. I say now, there's no one else like you. Lion of you. Lion of you. Sinegai di ma, 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 sineg
comes here now. Oh yeah, I say I feel like shouting. Look for the ear of your neighbor and shout hallelujah inside. I feel like running. I feel like running. Tell them, don't be say I the place. Now Jesus, I the praise. Oh. Wave it. Do something crazy. Can I see the crazy people in this place? You are permitted to wave your wing. Wave it. Wave it. Wave it. Wave it. about greatness will be evident in your life. None of you will die before one year. Those who have been waiting to get married will marry before one year. Those who have not had their children will return here with their children the next one year. You came on transport, come back in one year with your car. You came a tenant, come back in one year living in your own property. Whatever you prayed for on this mountain, the Lord has given it to you. You will continually enjoy the best of God. With your hand above your head, shout with louder, I am gateway. Let me allow that I am gateway. My covenant place is at the topmost top. Only good things are permitted in my life. Can I hear your amen? You are blessed. Let's share the grace as we move.